Hi, today we're going to look at making lists within Aspen. So I'm logged in right now as a patron, um, and I can go ahead and um, start creating a list in a couple different ways. First off, under your name is a shortcut to all the different account options that you have. So there is a your lists option here that if you clicked in, it would take you out to your lists. Also the same link over here to your list. So they're both gonna get you to the same place. So you could start to create a new list from within your account. Another probably more common option that you'd let, you might want to do is within the library catalog. So I'm just gonna search right now. Within the library catalog, underneath each grouped work, you'll see an add to list button. So as I'm browsing through the catalog, I can just see, uh, you know, select items that I might be interested in added to my list, and then go ahead and click add to list. When you first go to create a list, everyone by default is going to have a my favorites list. If you don't like the my favorites list or you want to create a new list, all you have to do is click on create a new list. When you do this, you can go ahead and give the list a name. Um, so books I want to read next year. If this is a staff list, you might want to include a description. So say you're putting a list together for maybe um, a state readers list or a holiday or based on an author or a different topic or theme, maybe you would wanna include a description of why that list was put together. Now let's talk about this access button here. Right now I'm just logged in as an everyday patron. I don't have any staff permissions and I see this access button. So by default, the, the list is going to be set to private. If I go ahead and toggle this over to public, and you might be able to see this text here, it says public lists can be shared with other people by copying the URL of the list or using the email list button when viewing the list. So maybe I wanna share this list out with my book club, or I'm a teacher and I'm putting together a list to share out my, with my classroom or just my friends, or maybe I wanna share this list on social media. Whatever the use case is, I, the list maker, choose to share this list out, what I can do is make this list public. What this doesn't do is that this doesn't make this list searchable within the library catalog for anyone else to see. That is never going to happen. So your patron list will never be public within the catalog. So please don't get tripped up on the you know public versus private. It just means that if this user chooses to share out this list, via URL or via email, then they can. When I go through this creation of lists today, everything that you see that I do is going to be the same for a staff member or a patron. The only difference is, is if right now I was at this spot of making my list and I had additional staff permissions to make publicly created lists within my catalog, an additional toggle would pop up right here that says make this list searchable. And I could toggle this on or off. But otherwise, everything that you're about to see, it will be the same for the patron or the staff member. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this list. Now I can add titles in a variety of ways. I can just keep you know, scrolling through my catalog and I could click add to list. Now you'll see that the default choose a list is, with, is the last list I was actively working within. So I can keep adding to that list. Um, also, if I had a drop down of other lists, I could you know, select from here another list I wanted that title to be on. We looked at the beginning that um, underneath the name, if you go to your lists, or you can click into my account and go to your lists. As you keep adding more lists, this will just tile down this screen. There's also some list management available for you. So you can select lists and delete lists. Again, you can create a new list from here. Once you get a number of lists, there's gonna be a couple different sorting options available for you. But let's just click into books I wanna read next year and see some additional options. So you can add multiple titles. Um, this is you know, maybe beneficial for a staff member. Maybe you're making a list and you want it to match up with a book display or pulled um, a number of titles that you want to add to this list. If you don't want to do it manually, you can add multiple titles. You can do this in two different ways. You can either put the ISBN number of the item that you want to add to the list. So how you would do this is you would put the ISBN number one on each line 
like so. So pretend these are numbers. And then you would click add to list. Ask them would read through all of your collections. It would find that matching ISBN number and add it to your list. The other thing that you can do though, is you can also add multiple items by title. If I just go ahead and put in, again, one per line, the titles that I want. If I then go click add to list, Aspen is going to look throughout your catalog to find those items and to add those titles. So how this works is Aspen's going to go find the most relevant title that matches what I put in. So of course, you know, we're looking at things like The Giver, Pride and Prejudice, Dracula. These are very famous titles. So you can feel pretty confident that Aspen's going to go grab the correct thing. But if maybe you're adding a list of board books and they're really common names like summer or spring, Aspen's just going to go grab the most relevant thing. So you might just, you know, in that case, just double check that it did go fetch the title that you had in mind. And if not, you can always delete it from here if it did, you know, make a mismatch. But for those bestsellers or really popular items, you should feel really confident that using that add multiple titles by title will work really great and super fast to add multiple titles to a list. Along the top, you can also see that email list um, option. So if I made this public list, I could send an email right from here. This list will also get its unique, own unique URL. So I can, if I've, since I've made this list public, I could take this URL and share it out social media or in an email or out with friends. Anywhere that I wanted to post this URL, I could, and it would take users right into this list if it was public. I also have two different options here for printing. So I can either print this list, you know, just how it is, or I can first export this list to Excel and then print from there. There are four different types of citations available under generate citations. I could click into any of these four options and ask them to automatically generate citations based off the titles on this list. There are a number of sorting options as well. So I can sort by title, date added, recently added, and user defined. So let's look at user defined. So user defined pops up these little arrows here. So maybe I'm making a top 10 list or I just wanna prioritize my list in some way. I can just go ahead and use those arrows to move these items up and down. I can also click into edit. And let's say instead of this being position one, I wanna make this position three. I could go ahead and do that. Also, if I click into edit, if I have multiple lists, I could copy this title to another list and choose from my dropdown. And same with moving, I could move this item to another list and just choose from my dropdown. Let's take a look at a couple other areas within Aspen where lists show up. Let me just search the catalog for Gone Girl. When I search the catalog and I'm logged in, I will see any lists that this title appears on, but also any New York Times lists or any staff lists that are publicly searchable within Aspen. So I could click right directly into here and be taken into my list. Another area of Aspen where my list shows up is if I go to my homepage and I look at my browse categories. As soon as a patron creates a list, this browse category will automatically pop up. We have three personalized browse categories, your lists, your recommendations, and your saved searches, and this is one of them. Again, as I make multiple lists, these will just tile across the screen. So I could click into here and get taken out into my list. We hope you enjoy creating lists in Aspen. And as a reminder, if you go to help.aspendiscovery.org, along the top, there's a section called users. Click on lists to find more information about creating lists within Aspen.